Amy Brenneman plays Zoe McDonald in The Old Man. I'm Matt Noble, a gold derby. And I want to kick things off, Amy, by asking you, what do you find most interesting about Zoe? Uh, she is a very complex, very smart, very, she has never had the chance to flower into who she is and have the capability of showing all that she is. I find also in terms of the old man, every single person, every single other person is part of this like super complicated, decades long spy thriller. Zoe is the audience. She's a newbie, she's an outsider, um, but she's just as complex as everybody else, but she comes from a totally different world. Mm. And you're right, she does have that like audience perspective and particularly with the Dan Chase character who she meets at the beginning of the series and has to sort of size up and figure out this sort of very like big wild world that he sort of introduces her to. How do you, as an actress coming in to, to this show, sort of have to size up Jeff in those scenes <laughs> and, and learn about him and about uh, how your characters uh, work together? Well, it's, it's uh, I feel like there's two different answers to that. Uh, sizing up Jeff is, I mean, you've met him. He's completely available, entirely present, and really, like, you could play Zoe with him. I mean, he just makes everybody feel like a million bucks. That is no work at all. I mean, the only work of that is to play as hard as he does, you know. Um, in terms of the plotting, um, you know, just like Zoe, I didn't want to know too much about that world. You know, I didn't, I mean, it's like, I don't want to read this, the, the scripts that, because then I get to sort of understand. And also she is the person that says like, that's really crazy or that that's really amazing or that's really, you know, this world that they're so familiar with and how they are um, with each other, um, she gets to have perspective on. But at the same time, you know, what I always say to Jeff is, she is an American woman living in the 21st century. Her life is just as complex and she has to shape shift and dissemble just as much as any spy just to get through her day. And I think that's what they recognize. That's what he recognizes in her in the first date. It's like he thought that she was sort of a, a dull, stupid person, I'm sure. And she is just as awake and alert and complex as he is. Mm. And in that first date episode, the second episode of the series, I. Uh, that you have that really interesting scene where you talk about um, two different ways of seeing the breakup uh, that Zoe has with her husband. And your character says she tells it to herself both ways because she's not sure of what the truth is. Um, how did you approach that scene? Because that is quite uh, like sort of, you have the sort of two different perspectives from Zoe in a yeah. very short amount of time. Well, I, I think that's who she is. And I think that's what Chase falls in love with. And, and not everybody does that. Most of us are very committed and attached to our story, right? It's like, my mother didn't love me, or, you know, I peaked in high school, or, um, or I'm beautiful all the time, or whatever the story is, right? And I think artists and probably spies <laughs> have kind of a distance from a story, right? It's like, oh, that's the way you told that story. You know, we see that in politics all the time. It's like, oh, there's different ways to tell a story. Usually people can't do that with their own story because they're attached to the story and they identify with it. Um, so I think that is really the way, and I think to the larger theme, which obviously Zoe doesn't know Dan, but that's why his eyes are bugging out of his head because who is the victim and who's the villain? You know, it really depends on on um, your one's perspective. And I think the fact that she could see herself as, as the villain in her marriage breakup, she was the person that broke it up with good reason, but she can see things from both sides. And I think that's something that Dan completely doesn't expect from her. And um, that's why they fall in love <laughs> because they're very similar. <laughs> often, it, like, I feel like acting often is trying to find like the truth of a character mm -hmm. and, like, it seems like Zoe's way of finding truth is by thinking of different perspectives, viewing herself as the villain and then as the victim. How do you as an actress try to find sort of the truth in a character that you play? Oh, it's such a good question. I mean, I feel like when I was younger, um, 
I would sort of think a lot by myself or get a playlist together and just sort of, um, now it's really, it's really in the doing, you know? I mean, I may have sort of an idea, but then it's really in the doing. I think there's a great, um, there's a great uh, slogan that's, you know, people aren't what they say, it's what they do. You know, so so I think that this is I live I, I I practice a collaborative art form. I practice an in the moment art form. So I can have all sorts of ideas about it. But then when I'm actually doing it, it's like oh that was completely different. Or um, so I think it's I try to think a little bit less and be more present to what is actually happening and not just my ideas of it. I think John Steinberg does that, the, the showrunner, a good, a good screenwriter, right? If you're a novelist, you write the novel, I know exactly how it is, and there it is. If you're a screenwriter, you write down the words and then you give it to me, right? And then it can be like, oh, what I thought actually isn't what's living. It's actually not the truth of it. So I think it's in the doing. And on the show, you have a cast that have done a lot, including yourself, in television and film and just like the sort of, the works that people have been a part of uh, leading up to this. When you come together to make a project like this, uh, particularly with you in your scenes, Amy, how do you sort of seek to serve each other and sort of uh, build each other up as you collaborate together? So nice. Um, yeah, all sorts of ways. Um, when I came in, uh, like Jeff Bridges is all, I don't. I can't speak about John. Oh no, I have done, worked a little bit done. Um, Jeff is off book, right? So he he doesn't have the script in his hand. He learns his lines beforehand. I know that sounds really kind of like, well, of course, you know, actors do that. But, you know, some movie stars are building their empire, right? They don't have time to learn their lines, right? So the minute you get, it's like, oh, wow. And you, you know, I looked at his script and it's scribbled and he has thoughts. So it's some, some of it is in the prep. You know, some of it is like, I want to be absolutely available to whatever you may do. You know, I don't want to be like learning my lines. Um, and then, and then it's, it's, it's just really to be present and, and celebratory and to let go, you know, Jeff is incredible um, at letting go, you know, sometimes in any line of work, I know in my line of work, you'll have a take or a performance and you go like, oh, that's so great. And then the next time you'll just kind of repeat it, you know, cause it felt so good. Jeff just lets it go, lets it go, lets it go. Like that's done. And also he knows filmmaking, that's in the can. They have that, why would we do it again, right? So it's constantly being kind of um, freed up in, in different ways and uh, carrying the other person with you. Mm. Is there anything you, uh, you've you learned about yourself or about acting through this role and through this series? For sure. Um, I mean, just being, you know, when season one, especially just being with Jeff Bridges every day for like three months um, was a gift of my lifetime. You know, not only his artistry and his acting and what we got to do together, but him as a human. Um, he's 15 years older than me, you know, and sometimes you go, OK, where's what does it look like to get older? And I'm like, oh, that's what it looks like. You know, beautiful family, beautiful marriage. His own creativity, Lithgow has this, too. It's not acting's over here, music's over here, painting's over here, writing's over here. It's a water wheel of creativity, right? And all of us in whatever line of work, especially in the freelance world, it's like, oh, sometimes I won't act for six months because that project fell apart. That doesn't mean I'm sitting around getting grouchy. It's like, write a song, do you, you know, make it like the creativity as a practice and as a way of life and as um, a way of, of being generous, that's Jeff Bridges all over. Something, uh, something just from my sort of brief discussion with him when I talked with him about the old man, like what I took away was he is just such a joyful and appreciative person for the opportunities he has and the experiences, like it was just sort of bubbling out of him. Uh, what, like, what have you, what are you like when you look back on your season one old man experience? What's something you're particularly appreciative of and joyful for? I mean, being around that, I mean, you feel sort of high. And I'm not just saying that because he put the like, Big Lebowski. I mean, you just feel sort of high. You just feel like glass half full, you know? So whether it's like a, you know, an interesting moment at the craft service table or every, you know, he and I have, I think, a similar spiritual practice, right? Which is like, you don't judge what comes your way. It's like, what can you learn from it? What can you take delight in? And and it's very, very infectious. Um, 
Yeah. And I think for me, it, it's, um, you know, when I first read this and sat down with John Steinberg and Dan Schatz, and the, the, the creators, uh, I was like, am I, am I playing the girlfriend? Like, I feel a little old to play the girlfriend, but there, what I love about this project is it's a re-examination of all these tropes that we know, right? It's, it's like this muscular masculine action hero. It's like, okay, what happens when he gets old? You know, America first. It's like, okay, what did happen overseas? You know, I'm the girlfriend. It's like, yeah, but she's got a lot going on too. So we're constantly sort of, and I think ultimately it's sort of this, um, kind of examination of masculinity and hyper masculinity, toxic masculinity, and maybe a different way, which is really what Zoe says from the, you know, when, when they start really pairing up, it's like, let me talk to the guy, you know, that guy is not going to respond to like muscle domination. Like what's another way. Um, so I think that's it's like, as, as these systems break down as sort of international politics shift, what's another way. I think something also that's sort of interesting about this show and this experience, particularly from your perspective, who's done a lot of work in network television in the past, which is like, you know, you had like 20 episode seasons and things like that. You've now gone to a seven episode season. So your shortest sort of season in that sense. But because of some breaks you guys had to take, it took you like two years to film it. So it's your shortest season of television, but your longest season at the same time. What was that experience like? I mean, utterly unique, right? Yeah. I mean, I got cast in it in the fall of 2019. We started talking, you know. Um, you know, of course, like it spans this this utterly unique time, both because of COVID and also because of Jeff's illnesses and just sort of all the ways that we sort of stayed flexible um to, to what was coming our way and then and then yeah and then reconnecting with with zoe and and sort of what um what it means to be a woman in this world what to what it means to be a woman in my world right now you know and um you know and also revisiting when i when i when i first sat down with with dan and 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 john i said you know weirdly it reminds me a bit of this movie heat that i did years ago where i'm like you know with the bad guy and then he's like hi i'm the bad guy and then i'm like i love you anyway you know and i'm like that always stuck in my craw as much as i love that movie and they're like oh no 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 we talk about that we talk about what would Edie say now you know and that was so satisfying in episode 3 when i find out he's a bad guy and his daughter talks to me on the phone and instead of saying i love you i say get the hell out of my house you know what i mean <laughs> like you're a freak so i think it's again sort of this constant um dialogue about autonomy and agency and who's got it and who's willing to share it mm. We're an awards website at Gold Derby. You've received five Emmy nominations in the past, two for your work on NYPD Blue in the 90s, three for your uh, lead role in Judging Amy, uh, which was in 2000, 2001, 2002, which is like quite fond years of the Emmys for me because they were the first three Emmys I really watched and sort mm -hmm. of it was my gateway into getting into awards and stuff. Do you want to give us like a window into something uh, like a particular memory of that time of going to those Emmy awards at like a pretty interesting thought, time in TV. Yeah. I just thought like every time I was on TV, I got nominated for an Emmy. Like that was, kind of what it yeah. um, no, it was incredible. I mean, I will say that uh, those years that I was nominated for judging Amy, um, I was up against Edie Falco and the Sopranos, which is like being up against the Beatles. So I actually didn't even like write an acceptance speech. I was like, Edie Falco's going to win. But I do think it was this interesting transition. And, and you're more of a historian probably than I am. But, you know, Sopranos was coming online, right? I mean, so it was this first is like, oh, what is this streaming thing, you know? But we were still able to do um, complex and awesome stuff on network too. I think we're actually kind of circling back to that in a funny way. I feel like the streaming glut, it's like, oh, what 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 can we do on network, you know, and and two different things, apples and oranges. Um, oh yeah, I went pregnant. I was like pregnant with my daughter. I went, you know, it was like a very um a, a wonderful time and a wonderful time to I just love I just saw Barbara Hall yesterday who wrote me that role. And so it's just, a. I always think as an actor, you're also celebrating all the people that sort of created that experience and to share it with Tyne, um, Tyne Daly. Um, mm -hmm. So that's always nice to be, be with somebody yeah. you love. 
it was such an interesting time in television because like you had the sort of real rise of cable, particularly of HBO and the Sopranos six feet under stuff. You also had some of the best network television that had ever been seen with judging Amy, the West wing 24 yeah. was starting. So like, it was just this great sort of cacophony of great network and premium cable shows. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. Um, how does working in TV today compare to back then where now we've got streaming and yeah. basic cables really become a big player at the Emmys yeah. too? Yeah, I mean, it's such a, you know, it's changing all the time. I, I feel like uh, I was developing something uh, a couple of years ago and it became a streaming pitch, which was fine. And the writer I was working, I liked the writer that I was working with, that was no problem. But I had really, I realized I really had conceived of it more as a network show. And what I mean by that is there's time to hang out with the characters. I think the problem in streaming sometimes is the plot just gobbles up everything, you know, and everybody wants the Game of Thrones and everything. So when you have a steaming forward plot, it's very hard to have character moments, right? It's like, well, you know, would I have a cup of coffee if the meteor is coming, you know? <laughs> and I, I think like with Ted Lasso and with, um, I just started uh, Somewhere, Someone Somewhere, that great uh, little uh, HBO. Uh, I mean, comedy has always been able to like stick to characters, but I feel like we're sort of longing to get back to whether it's streaming or cable, what's a character drama? Like what is a thing that has, and it could be a procedural, what's a thing that has a plot that moves it along, but really the pleasure is hanging out with these characters and giving them new plots, but really it's not about the plot as much as, ooh, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna respond? I mean, I remember, you know, watching The Office and like all, like I would rewind it. I was like, how did, what did they, you know, it was all about relationship, all about behavior. Um, so I think that there's there's a beautiful, I mean, Succession obviously is doing it more most because that plot is fantastic, but really it's the characters, right? And their relationships. So that's what I'm always interested in. Um, I'm terrible as a creator with plot. Like I'll, I've developed shows and I'll say to my husband, who's a, you know, a, a screenwriter, I'll say, oh, I have this idea and here's the situation and here's the people. And he's like, oh, that's so great. What happens? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> I know how they behave. I know what they say. But um, so I think balancing plot and character is always that that sweet spot. What What's your favorite character moment for Zoe in The Old Man? Um, I, I got a bunch, but probably that big scene at the end of four. Um, yeah. All of four, actually, because I liked this challenge of, um, you know, she's a woman who's utterly powerless at that moment, right? And yet, so the, just the opaqueness of it and the kind of dignity and rather than like, again, like I'm, I'm, I and Zoe are in our 50s, right? It's not going to be like, I'm scared. I mean, she might be scared, but it's also like, I'm, I have dignity and I, I'm going to, you know, and then just how smart she is to figure out how to turn the tables. But I also, what I loved about the, 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 this, the, the words on the page and then also how it ended up happening. She's never done this before. So I think as, you know, I've been around long enough where it's like, we're going to write a strong woman. It's like, I don't believe that. I feel like she's imitating a dude. I don't know, you know, mm. but to watch somebody gain some strength, you know, and to watch her hit her stride, um, I think was really exciting. And, and I think that audience was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> so it was one of those great, great scenes to be a part of. Well, wow. and, um, I mean, what do you, what's a moment shooting or a scene that was just particularly fun to do? Um, I would say, I mean, there were, everything's fun with Jeff Bridges and I'm not joking. Um, and I was pre-pandemic, so it's like we were, <laughs> we were all innocent. Um, you know, I would say actually that the date scene in in um in that second episode, um, our wonderful uh, director John, you know, I could tell that I was um you know telling it one way, telling it another way, and then the the camera was doing that interesting thing where you sort of go back around him, and then and you know usually I don't really like results, but but John he said the second part is like a ghost story. And I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. And when I saw it put together, I was like, oh, that was so brilliant. 
because it's like, she seems one thing. And then literally Dr. Jekyll, you come around, it's like, what just happened? And then also what I loved, this wasn't a shooting thing, but when I saw the show put together, the look in my eye is similar to old Abby, similar to young Abby and, and similar to Angela, you know, like we all, this female power um, had a very similar quality. And I loved, you know, cause there's so many scenes I wasn't in. I loved when it, seeing it all put together. Mm. Well, Amy, uh, thanks so much for talking with us today. All the best of luck for the Emmys. Hopefully you'll get your sixth nomination for the old man. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Uh, people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com to follow the Emmys and other award races. And Amy, this was so much fun. Thanks for chatting Thank with me. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. I really no appreciate worries. it. No worries.